In this video, I discuss Bitcoin runes, how to buy and sell runes, but more importantly, is there even any point trading these and can you actually make good money from this or was this just Twitter influencers shilling the next best hype and then looking for exit liquidity as the market now slows. So today I'm going to summarize all of the main kind of key terms you need to know as well as simply as I possibly can. But just remember if you're a Bitcoin maxi, some of what I'm saying you might regard as inaccurate but I don't really care because most of the people watching this particular video will just want to know how to buy and sell these and whether it's even profitable and whether you can make any money trading these because on my channel, I have videos where we trade Solana meme coins and within half an hour or an hour, you can do uh, flips where you 2x, 5x or even 10x or more. Is this the same or is this just massive hype? So on Solana, we have meme coins and you can buy and sell these meme coins on this particular blockchain. On Bitcoin already, there were tokens created before, for example, BRC20, Ordinals, but now there are something called runes. It's a new type of token. You don't need to get in, make it any more complicated than that. There's just a new type of token. It's on this particular very slow, old, archaic, but legendary blockchain. So that's it. We're going to look at how to buy and sell these, where to trade these, how to analyze the price of uh, runes as well to kind of work out whether it's actually worth it. And you might be surprised by the answer, which I'll share later in this video. So runes are on Bitcoin. Now let's go through a few key terms that you need to know. And just before that, why is it a big deal on Bitcoin? Well, Bitcoin is an amazing blockchain in the fact that it's immutable, uh, lots of privacy, security, stuff like that. Runes inherits a lot of these benefits from Bitcoin. Previously, on the blockchain ETH, when you would make an NFT, for example, what would happen, an NFT is, again, just another token on this particular chain here. So these are NFTs. What would happen is you'd save files of these images, JPEGs, um, various URLs, places on the internet, and that's not really immutable. Whereas these runes, you're literally saving these inscriptions on the blockchain. So they're pretty much there forever or as long as the internet will exist. And that's what they're shipping or selling us anyway. And, and it is true. It is true. It is kind of amazing uh, and it's nice and it's historic and stuff like that. But I don't really care that much about that kind of stuff. And I'm sure you don't really care about that much stuff either. But I'm just letting you know that's why um, everybody's uh, going a little bit crazy over it on Twitter at the moment, but the hype has already calmed down a good bit. Many problems with this. Very, very slow in terms of doing transactions as well. There's issues with volume of this particular chain at the moment as well. And there's issues with, in terms of friction, how easy it is to just make new runes for anybody. Kind of like pump.fun where everybody could just quickly make their own meme coin on Solana, for example. So what do you need to do to trade these? So for example, with Solana, we use phantom wallets. And I have videos on my channel showing you exactly how to set that up. With Bitcoin, you need a different type of wallet. Um, there are several different ones you can use. The one I've been using is Xverse. Not really had any issues. And I'll link it down below. This is the website. So you have a mobile app, browser extension. Um, so you can download that for Chrome and just set that up. And all you need to do is send some Bitcoin, first of all, to your wallet, to your Xverse wallet. Luminex.io. This is the place where we can mint runes. So if you click on this, you can see here ordinals. So that's a, a previous token, but a lot of people are shifting now to runes. On this particular one, you've got options here in the top right. So you've got the button mint, etch, transfer, etc. And etch is basically, again, I'm just making some things as simple as possible. Let's say you want to be a bit of a dev and you want to create your own rune. Well, you can type in your ticker here, minimum 12 characters, and then decimal, symbol, max supply, limit per mint, etc. And you can set your transaction speed and submit that. So etching basically means creating your own coin, shall we say, your own meme coin on Bitcoin. Let's look at it that way. Whereas minting is literally, there's an existing uh, token that you're minting. So you'll find the token that you want. So let's say it's, um, well, let's choose one of these that hasn't already minted out. You can see here where it says 100% next to each of these runes, 100% means it's already minted out. So this one, the God of Bitcoin, um, still has not minted out. So we can actually click on this 
click on Mint. And this is now where we would connect our Xverse wallet and Mint this. A lot of people have been complaining about the fees, so a quick word on that. You can check this on YCharts.com. And if you uh, go down here, you can see over the last, let's go over the last year, for example, on Bitcoin, you can see the cost of transactions and you can see there was a massive spike um, after halving because that's basically when runes began and everybody wanted to get in very, very early. Now we're going to discuss later in this video where that was actually worth it. But basically, as you can see, fees have actually come down quite a bit. So they're quite reasonable at the moment. If you want to get an update of exactly what the fees are right now, you can use this website. It's called mempool.space. Again, I'll link it below and you can have a look here to see what the costs are at the moment and just to see how much it would cost if you put a fast transaction through right here. So I'm just going to zoom in here so you can see here where it says sats forward slash vbyte. Again, don't worry about the kind of nomenclature and what they're using here. Just worry about the, the, the numbers here. That's all I care about. What's the dollar figure here below for low priority, high priority. So it's looking like about $20 to just kind of make sure your transaction goes through. So if you're clicking on fast here, you're looking at something like $20 for the transaction, but it was many hundreds of dollars on the day of the halving. Okay, so you can mint a rune and then you can go, in theory, you can go sell the rune. You may make some money from this. However, how do you know that there's anybody who wants to buy your rune? Because there are hundreds of new uh, rune inscriptions being released, new tokens being released all the time, every single day. And a lot of them are not worth anything at all. So how do you know anybody cares? And then the other thing is, this is one way. So this is one method where you can mint first and then sell, see if you make some money. What's the other way? The other way is you can do everything on secondary. You can buy and then hope the value goes up and then sell. For that, we need to see some charts and we need to see what the price is doing. And we need to try and determine which ones will do well. So which ones are worth buying and then selling later? And how long are we going to wait? Is it an hour? Is it a year? <laughs> like, how long do we have to wait for this to happen? I haven't got a year to wait around. I'm sure you haven't got a year to hold cash in some random uh, room that you'll forget about in a year anyway. There are a few other ways you can do this as well, but I don't want to make this particular video too complicated, but I'll just show you another uh, basic one, which I'll just pop at the bottom here. But basically is rune, you get it airdropped to you because you hold some pre-runes. Don't worry about that for now. I'll explain it later in a minute. And then you sell your airdrop. That's the other way to do it that people were mainly doing in the last few days. And um, arguably, that's one that actually does work reasonably well. But again, we'll come back to that particular one. So let's get back on Luminex. So you can see here on Luminex, we're minting and then we may want to go and sell. So where do we go and buy and sell? Now, there's a couple of different websites you can use, but again, to keep it simple, I'll use the main one, which is this, unisat.io. unisat.io, I'll link below in the description. By the way, just before I share a further ridiculous amount of value with you guys, please hit the like button and comment below if you do appreciate the breakdown that I do on these videos. I don't know why people are making this particular runes concept so overly complicated, because that's not going to help new people come and try and trade this stuff. You have to make it as simple as possible. And I think that's one of the issues runes are going to have, in my opinion. It's going to be a massive challenge. Hopefully it'll get better soon. But anyway, Unisa is the place to come. The other place is Magic Eden. You've probably heard of that before. Now Magic Eden, you can see, you can click here on the top uh, on the blockchain you want. So you can click on Bitcoin, for example. And you've got some well-known uh, collections here already. So you've got Node Monkeys, Bitcoin Puppets, Quantum Cats, etc. But here, where you click on runes here at the top, notice that the page is not really quite ready yet. So it's not really ready for you to buy and sell and trade on Magic Eden runes right now. However, what do you see just before that? You see here, if you go down pre-runes, so these are basically uh, opportunities where people have received airdrops if they're holding usually uh, a particular ordinal. And that was the third type of way you could actually make money. Now, the big problem with that is if you bought one of these ordinals before, again, using Bitcoin, and then they airdropped, the problem is when they're taking the snapshot. So let me explain exactly what that means. Let's use the first one, Runestone, as an example. I believe they were doing an airdrop of a uh, dog, basically, token that they're going to use for runes. Okay, so that's Runestone. So let's say you bought one of these. What happens is then uh, with all airdrops, you get these snapshots. So on a particular date, 
the team will see who's holding these rune stones, which wallets. So let's say you've got your Bitcoin wallet here and you're holding one rune and you're holding one X of these. What happens then is they take the snapshot on any date, let's say it's 20th of April or something like that. Then what they'll do later, they, you're on the list. You're basically on that particular white list now and they'll send you a dog token, for example, a dog rune, let's call it. And that will be worth some money. Maybe it'll be worth 1,000, maybe 5,000, who knows? Wait and see. And that will be sent to you at a later date and you can trade that. And now most people will quickly go onto the markets and they will sell that because that's almost like free money. But is it really free money? Because your rune stone that you bought, let's say for 0 0.08 Bitcoin, and I'll show you the chart in just a minute, by the time of the snapshot and them taking the snapshot and then you selling this, what was it worth after? What if it's only worth 0 0.02 now? So you've lost 0 0.06 BTC in theory. Unless you hold the rune stone and it regains value later, you have to remember that. So whatever this is worth, let's say 0 0.01 BTC, you have to realize that you're still making a loss if you just sold everything, the rune stone and the airdrop. Just something to think about because that's the third way people are making money. And again, loads of influencers on Twitter were shilling this heavily, uh, runes heavily, which is understandable. It's a historic moment and stuff like that. And it's a very interesting concept. But at the same time, it was mostly a lot of these airdrops were getting hyped. And now I think random people are buying and selling runes, not knowing what the hell they're doing and quickly realizing that there are a lot of issues here. So let's have a look at rune stone in terms of value. Now, if you have a quick look at the analytics here, which is the, the floor price here, we can actually zoom out. So let's zoom out. So you can see here the floor price here. I'm just zooming back out. Now look how much it's fallen, almost off a cliff. So around 10th of April and stuff, it was all about the 0 0.08 mark and now it's 0 0.02. That's a significant drop. That's a 75% drop. So if you're still holding that, you've lost 75% of value, especially if you bought it at any point in April. Just worth Noting that, so you could argue a lot of people are buying the rumor, selling the news in terms of buying these just to get the airdrop. And you have to do the maths to work out whether it was worth it, of course. Now, let me show you something on Unisat. These are all of the uh, runes at the moment. The, the, well, they'll call it the trending runes. And some of these are famous because they were some of the first that were inscribed on the blockchain. What does that all mean? Let's just take a little pause there. Again, just a reminder from earlier in this video, we first we had the BRC20 ones. So we had ordinals before, and then these are kind of cool because they're much like Bitcoin. They're on the blockchain, so they're immutable, they're secure. Once you inscribe something, it's there till the end of time, in theory. That's why it's different. And we have runes now, which is an update. So this is the old tech, which is the ordinals, and you can call it new tech in terms of the runes. And remember, etching is creating a rune. When we claim that room is called minting, and then obviously you can buy and sell the room as you would any other meme coin on any blockchain. Now, because they're kind of like meme coins, they have no utility really, generally. So you're buying it merely on speculation, uh, com community, speculation, narratives, hype. Some of them may attach some utility. They may decide, look, we'll have a little bit of utility too. So all of these different things will affect the value. But over bearing all of this on top of all of this is volume if nobody is here nobody cares nobody's buying or selling then nothing's going to happen and i've explained that in my videos to you guys before many many times so if there is a blockchain where nobody really cares and not a lot of volume nothing's going to happen now again the argument by all the influencers and stuff is bitcoin is the largest it has the largest market cap bitcoin itself as a cryptocurrency by the way has a larger market cap than I think all of the other uh, cryptocurrencies combined. So yeah, that's true in theory. Remember, this is all in theory stuff. It's all chit chat, you know. Yes, Bitcoin is a massive blockchain, it's historic, but it's archaic as well. And even runes are kind of archaic in the way that they work because all of this minting and etching and messing about and stuff just takes forever. Like, it takes many, many minutes and stuff to do transactions. But let me show you something that's even more complicated now and a bigger issue. Notice here on the right, it says pre-split and auto-split and UTXOs. What the hell is all of this stuff? Why am I messing about with this stuff? If I, I just want to buy and sell meme coins. So on, uh, on Solana, for example, you've seen I use uh, Bunkbot and I use other bots on other uh, blockchains as well. And I simply just click a button, buy and sell and stuff. So if I have $100 of Solana and I buy something and then I have a little bit left, it's like your bank account. 
You have $100 in your bank account, you pay $19 for something, and in your bank account will remain $81. Very, very simple. On Bitcoin, nothing is that simple, unfortunately. And they will argue, obviously, it's because of the security and privacy and stuff like that, that it needs to be uh, incredibly complicated. But anyway, this is how UTXOs work. Again, I'm just going to make it as simple as possible. This is the way I understand it anyway. So basically, what we're talking about here is your wallet. So I talked about having $100. Well, instead of $100, you have your wallet here. And it has $100, but in various notes and change. So you have some $10 bills, some $20 bills let's call it $5 notes, coins, $1 coins, stuff like that. You have a mixture of stuff here that makes up the $100. Fine, so it's not like a bank account. Now, the big problem with this is when you're buying something on Bitcoin uh, blockchain that, let's say, costs $70, you have to, the way it works is, it kind of combines the different coins and stuff that you have, these are all UTXOs. So these unspent, literally what it stands for, unspent transaction outputs. That's literally what UTXOs are. So you have to kind of, it combines all of these to try and make the 70. And if you can combine them all and it makes a little bit more, a little bit less, basically it creates new notes, like specific amount of change notes, like a $30 note. And it will send all of your balance across, everything you have in your wallet, even if it's even if you had $10,000 and you only need to buy something for $50, it will send everything over, work everything out, and then send you the change and make new notes for that change. Really annoying, archaic way of doing things. Like dark ages, when people were just changing random stuff in markets and using uh, all kinds of weird coins or other assets to buy and sell stuff. It's, it's kind of like that, basically, unfortunately. And because of all this messing about, it just, everything just takes really long. So going back to here, what you can do is you can split your wallet up uh, many different ways, first of all, so you can buy or mint a few of these, or you can ask it to auto split for you. And I'm not gonna get into this too much, because we could discuss this in a separate video if it's even worth minting runes, to be honest with you. But basically on Unisat, this is the issue. We can sort, so let me just refresh the page. So these are the trending ones at the moment, and we can sort by volume. This is all of the volume at the moment. And you can see apart from the first few, when you go further down, there's no volume in runes. Like nobody really cares that much. And in terms of change as well, obviously you've got the percentage change. You can see some of them going up or down, some of them, um, starting off all right. So you, we can actually click on these and have a look. But the problem is in terms of analytics dashboards, there's not a lot around at the moment either. So the technology to support trading runes is not there. It's literally non-existent. Like I have millions of places I can look at charts of meme coins on the other uh, blockchains and stuff like that and do some really detailed analysis and make some uh, trading decisions. On this, not. The other massive issue with this is I've heard stories where people are sending uh, around UTXOs and Bitcoin and stuff like that and then losing lots of money and it's just getting stuck in the system and error messages and stuff. And um, obviously some of the the uh, companies who own the software, they're apologizing and stuff, but like how is that even happening? It's kind of worrying. So we have to wait for the technology to catch up. So I'll be interested to see what happens with Magic Eden, um, Unisat, Luminex and stuff like that, that will try and improve this whole process, customer experience, UI, whatever you want to call it, it all needs to improve because it's way archaic. So basically even on here, when you look at the ones listed, as I said, everything's in batches and stuff. So you're either buying, you're buying different amounts of these tokens in these little packets. So it's kind of weird. You have to kind of write down and kind of try and work out if it actually makes sense for you and what you might be paying. Um, for each of these as one single sat. Now, if you've minted one already, you just connect your wallet, click here on My Assets, and you can connect Xverse, for example, and then it'll pick it up, and then you can actually list yours on here and see how it does. But like I said, based on the home, uh, going on the homepage, stuff like that, there's not much volume. So if I click on any random one of these, like this one, and I click on Orders, you can basically see all the ones that are listed, and then obviously there'll be some that are bought and sold on here as well. So you can get an idea there, but again, I would ideally want to look at a chart. So one uh, website I use, it's okx.com. And here you've got the actual um, uh, rune on here, but you can go on to analytics. So let's just go on general rune. So let's click on runes and scroll down. 
So you can see all of them. You can see again volume. You can see uh, the current price at the moment, market cap as well, change in uh, price, number of sales, stuff like that, and holders as well. And remember, this is in 24 hours. If you look at these sales, very, very low um, at the moment. And some of them are holding okay market caps, but I don't know if that's going to last very long because there's literally so much friction when it comes to buying and selling. And I think a lot of people are going to see quickly that the opportunity is not as great as people are making out at the moment anyway. Um, now here, if we click on one, like this was one of the most popular ones, Wanko Manko Runes. And on this, um, go to the analytics and then we can click on activity and stuff like that. You can do a little bit of analysis in terms of price, etc. You can even connect and list here for sale as well if you want to. For ordinals, one thing we saw is initially there was a little bit of hype and then it died off and then nobody cared for a very long time. And then... As things started to improve, market started to improve, people were buying and selling meme coins, NFTs more as well. We saw the volume uh, go up. Now, could the same thing happen to runes once we get everything improved in terms of buying and selling and trading? Very likely. But then in theory, that means that the time to buy or trade these, especially on secondary, is not now. Secondary meaning you're buying and selling uh, on another marketplace rather than minting uh, and stuff fresh. So the time to do that is later. Now, probably not as long a period as we had to wait here, but maybe a month or two before things kick off. So I would advise learning about it for sure, keeping an eye on the market, seeing if there's anything trending, seeing if there's genuinely places where within a day period, people are making flips of 2x, but rather 5 to 10x, like you could do on meme coins all day long. And then say, well, yeah, this is worth it. And you can make transactions quickly as well. And you don't have to be waiting forever. There's no risk you'll lose a lot of money with all these transactions and stuff as well. You can clearly see charts and analyze. You can get liquidity so you can get out in and out of positions easily. All of these things need to tick off, in my opinion, before they become something that a lot of people are going to jump into. Because the vast majority trading are not whales. So they're not going to be able to just buy and hold for two years and then um, hope hope value goes up. I didn't want to make this video obviously too long, but if you want me to actually live trade any specific areas of this so you understand it better, just let me know in the comment section below. And also how many of you have actually tried trading runes so far? How did it go for you? Please comment below.